Now that we have all the necessary software, it's time to upload and install WordPress. Before we start, we are going to check that our DNS has propagated. Go to whatsmydns.net, enter your domain, select NS from the drop down menu, and then click search. Green ticks are a good sign. We'll do a secondary check by typing in our domain into the browser. If a page similar to this is displayed, you're good to go. Fire up FileZilla or an FTP client of your choice. The FileZilla interface is split into three main areas, the credentials toolbar, local file browser and the remote file browser. The credentials toolbar is where we enter our login information. The top half of the local file browser will show a list of directories on your computer and the bottom half will show any files or subdirectories within a selected directory. The same goes for the remote file browser, except it's only active when we are connected to a remote destination. For host, enter your domain. The FTP username and password will be identical to your cPanel credentials. Remember, your cPanel username is contained within the account information email, and your cPanel password will be the password you set when you activated cPanel. If you're unsure, log into the customer area, go to your services, view details, then click on the change password tab. From here, you'll be able to see your username and set a new password. After you've entered your credentials, click quick connect. We are now connected to our host via FTP and the remote file browser is now active. You'll see a list of directories. For now, we are only worried about public HTML. Any content within the public HTML directory will be visible to the public. Double click public HTML. You'll notice the bottom half of the remote file browser is now showing all files within that directory. On the local file browser, navigate to where you extracted WordPress. I extracted it onto my desktop, so I'll select desktop from the top half of the file browser. We can now see the WordPress package we extracted earlier. Double click on the folder to reveal all files contained within. Highlight all files, then drag and drop it into the public HTML directory. Alternatively, you can just drag and drop the files from your desktop into the public HTML directory. WordPress is now being uploaded. While the upload is going, we'll go ahead and create a database from cPanel. A database is where WordPress stores the content of your website, including posts, pages, comments, and more. Go ahead and log into your cPanel. If you've forgotten the access link, check your account information email. There will be a link at the top. It's a good idea to bookmark this link. This is your cPanel. Your cPanel may look a bit different depending on the cPanel theme you are using. You can toggle between themes by using the switch theme drop down menu. For now, we'll stick to the X3 theme. Scroll down to databases, then click on MySQL databases. Under create new database, enter a database name you prefer. This can be anything, but generally you'd want the name to be descriptive. So in the future, when you have multiple databases, you can still differentiate between them. Click create. Once the database is created, click go back. The database we just created will now be listed under current databases and a summary of the database will also be displayed. Next, we'll create a user for the database. Under add new user, enter a username and password. When you're done, click create user, then go back. The last step is assigning a user to our database. Assigning a user to a database means we're giving this user, in this case WordPress, the privileges to access and modify the database. Under add user to database, select the user we have just created, select the database we just created, and then click add. We want to give this user all privileges. Check all privileges, then click make changes. Once you see a success message, go back. We can now see a user has been assigned. Make a note of the database name, username and the password as this information will be needed later on to connect WordPress to the database. Go back to FileZilla and check if WordPress has been completely uploaded. If not, wait a few moments. When the upload is complete, delete the license and readme files. After you've deleted the license and readme files, feel free to close your FTP client. 
We'll begin installing WordPress by entering our domain into the browser. A WordPress installation page should be displayed. Select your preferred language and click Continue. A notice will be displayed specifying the information you'll need before proceeding. This is the information we are going to use to connect WordPress to our database. Click Let's Go. Enter the name of your database. If you're unsure, check the settings in your cPanel. Enter your database username and password. 99% of the time you will not need to change the database host, so leave it as localhost. Table prefix can be changed if you'd like to run multiple WordPress installations or for security reasons. For now we'll leave it as WP underscore. Click submit when you're ready. If you've entered everything correctly, a success message will be displayed. Click run the install. Enter a site title you'd like. The username and password you set here will be used as the admin login for your site, so make sure to write it down and keep it safe. Enter your email and choose whether you'd like your website to be visible to search engines. When you're done, click Install WordPress. WordPress has now installed successfully. Click on Login to be taken to the login area of your site. This wraps up Chapter 2 of WordPress Starter 2015. Next, we'll move on to Block A of Chapter 3.